you won't believe how effective essays are as a way of learning. I, I know you're dubious. I was. But I wish I discovered them much sooner. I've missed out and I don't want you to miss out. So... In this video, I'm going to show you why essay writing is such a powerful learning technique. I'll show you how it can improve your thinking, and in case you're wondering whether it works for subjects like maths and physics, it does. And I'm going to share some really useful essay writing techniques and learning resources to get you started. It's a story where we go from mid-16th century France to modern-day neuroscience. A story about the science of learning, the human brain, George Orwell, Virginia Woolf, we even mentioned Jordan Peterson. And by the end, you will have transformed your ability to learn and think. Do with that what you will. It's easy to see essays as homework, like an assignment set by a tutor. And they can be that. But if that's all they are to you, then you're really missing out. Have you heard of the French writer and philosopher Michel de Montaigne? On the 28th of February, 1571, which was his 38th birthday, he did something unexpected. He was a nobleman, he lived in a castle just outside Bordeaux, and you could say he had a midlife crisis. But instead of buying a sports car, or ill-advised fashion items, or chasing women half his age, Montaigne moved a desk and a thousand books into one of the towers in his castle and started to write. The result of that decision was the creation of the modern essay form, and with it one of the most original and influential thinkers of the Renaissance. Montaigne innately recognised the power of writing as a way of developing understanding and insight. And he turned that in on himself. And despite writing in the introduction to his book on essays, I am myself the matter of my book. You would be unreasonable to spend your leisure on so frivolous and vain a subject. It became a bestseller of its day and had a profound impact on English and French literature. Shakespeare was a fan of Montaigne. Here's an apology. I think I've been mispronouncing his name. It's Montaigne, not Montagna. Sorry. But what's all this got to do with using essays as a way of learning? Well, we're not ready for that bit yet. It is coming. Incidentally, the word essay comes from the French essai. <laughs> I've probably mispronounced that too, meaning an attempt or a trial. Some of the greatest thinkers in recent human history wrote essays. I don't have time to list them all, but there's uh, Carl Sagan, George Orwell, Joan Didion, Virginia Woolf. That's just four out of hundreds. The essayist and novelist Joan Didion said, I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, what I see and what it means. And that's the point. Even renowned thinkers, writers and essayists aren't writing simply to share their thoughts and ideas. They write to form those ideas. They write to find meaning, explore thoughts and develop arguments. But what's that got to do with you? Well, writing essays make you a world-renowned thinker. Probably not but it will make you a better thinker and it'll improve your understanding of the world. There's another benefit too. You will see a huge improvement in your ability to communicate your ideas, written and verbal. If you have that kind of mind, you're probably thinking, show me some evidence that what you say is true. Okay, I will. Let's start with Bloom. Benjamin Bloom was an educational psychologist. He spent his entire career researching learning. In particular, he studied the different levels of cognitive function required for certain types of learning and what it takes to become an expert. He classified the cognitive steps needed to develop expertise on a topic. These have become known as Bloom's taxonomy. Actually, that's not completely true. What I've just shown you is the revised Bloom's taxonomy. It was changed in 2001 to make the steps verbs rather than nouns. But looking at it again, what do you notice? Can you write an essay without going through these steps? I don't think it's possible. Let's try an experiment. Which of these steps could you drop? Remember? That's essential. Understand? Oh, that's essential too. Apply? We'll come back to that one. Analyze. To write a good essay, you need to analyze the sources, break down their arguments, and work out exactly the ideas that they're attempting to convey. Which ideas are the most convincing and why? Are some of the ideas flawed? That's evaluation. And create? Where does that come in? Well, you're going to be writing an essay, an original work based on these steps. That's everything. Well, apart from apply, maybe. But it doesn't really matter that apply isn't included, because it's these top three steps, the analyze, evaluate and create, which are the most important. Here's why. Did I say that essay writing would make you a better thinker? I did. Let's look at how that works now. We're going to talk about critical thinking. 
Critical thinking is the ability to identify evidence and evaluate it, to probe, to investigate, to spot flaws in logic, to reason and draw conclusions. Instead of saying, the Battle of Hastings was fought in 1066, which is descriptive, critical analytical writing would say, William's victory at the Battle of Hastings transformed England forever. It was the start of Norman rule over the country, which changed the culture, language and economy. Wait a minute. Is that really critical analytical writing? Can you believe me when I tell you that? How did it transform England? How did it change the culture, language and economy? How was that significant? When you're thinking critically about your own work or other people's work, these are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself. I'm going to give you some advice on essay writing soon. But before I do that... I want to give you some other reasons as to why it's really effective. To write an essay, you usually need to read something first, which gives you the opportunity to use the most effective learning strategy that researchers have found. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know what it is because I rarely stop talking about it. Study after study has shown retrieval practice to be the most effective form of learning. This meta-analysis of 217 studies into retrieval practice confirms that it's more useful than rereading which is counterintuitive, but although it feels reassuring, rereading is not particularly effective because when you're doing it, you're not engaging with the material like you are when you're trying to retrieve it. And you can use retrieval practice in your note-taking process. What you do is you read a page and then close the book, and then with the book still closed, you write everything that you can remember about that page. Write as much as you can. And if you take notes that way, you'll remember much more quickly and thoroughly. Essay writing also encourages you to use another technique that research has shown is highly effective. Can you think of something that could improve your understanding as you're reading a book? How about asking yourself how and why questions? So you're learning about photosynthesis. Instead of just trying to remember what photosynthesis is, you ask yourself, why is this important? How does it affect other life on Earth? What would happen if photosynthesis wasn't possible? What does photosynthesis rely on? Why should you do this? Because it deepens your understanding of the subject. And you can take it further by connecting what you're learning to what you already know. In their book on common sense teaching, which despite its title is also a great book about how to learn effectively and efficiently, Barbara Oakley, Beth Rogowski and Terence Sanyowski delve into the science of how our brains work and learn. They suggest the learn it, link it approach. Doing this will help move information from your limited working memory to your almost unlimited long-term memory. So as you're summarising notes, ask how and why questions and link what you're learning to what you already know, because that will help you learn. But you know what? That's exactly what you should do when you're writing an essay, if you want to write a good one. You see, essay writing encompasses almost all of the most effective learning strategies. So you want to learn something quickly and well, write an essay on it. So how do you write an essay? Well, that's what this bit's about. First, you need a title. Now, if your essay's been set by a tutor, they will have given you a title. If it hasn't, then you'll have to come up with a title yourself. What makes a good title? Usually something that gives you the scope to reason, analyse and evaluate. Consider the importance of photosynthesis to life on Earth could be an interesting title. The essay should state your position and a reasoned argument of how you've arrived at it. It will analyse and evaluate. It will raise objections and then respond to them with an exquisitely argued position as to why those objections don't stand up. Depending on the type of essay, the objective could be to persuade the reader that this is the only sensible conclusion that can be drawn. And now it's time to talk about Jordan Peterson. Now, he and I are probably not natural bedfellows. Actually, I haven't read any of his books. Um, what little I know about him is just from a, a few YouTube videos that I've seen. And most of those have been about lobsters. So I don't really know enough to form an opinion on him. But I'm about to recommend something that he's created, so it's important that you know that I'm not receiving any money or benefiting in any way to do so. Now, he has created a free essay guide. Uh, you can download it from the link in the description. And it is very good. I found it by chance when I was looking for essay writing resources to share for this video, and I think you'll like it. Now, I've since discovered that he has a paid-for essay advice platform, which I'm not endorsing because I've never used, I've no idea what it's like. But I have read his essay guide. It's 25 pages long. The tone and style are a bit arrogant, but I like the advice. It explains the benefits of writing and gives a step-by-step -step guide on how to write an essay. It suggests how to structure it, 100 words split into 10 sentences per paragraph, with each paragraph covering one idea. The paragraph should follow a logical progression towards the destination of your argument. It talks about topics and how to curate a reading list, how to create an outline, and then how to start writing, how to edit, and how to improve. It's a comprehensive guide on how to write an essay, and Peterson says that students following it will produce something that is at least very good. I agree with that. 
Um, I've linked to it in the description, as well as a couple of other essay writing resources too. If you want to set yourself a challenge, learn something new, and become an expert problem solver, then I think you should take a look at brilliant.org the sponsor of this video. Brilliant's where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. It's created by experts from places like MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google. The interactive problems are where you learn through exploration, by hands-on interaction with the underlying concepts. It's a method that's proven to be six times more effective than watching videos. As you're challenged to think deeply about new concepts, to work with them and understand them, you develop something else too problem-solving skills, and critical thinking skills. With Brilliant, it's easy to develop a daily learning habit, which is one of the most important things you can do. Learning to code can be difficult, but Brilliant's programming courses are a great way to build foundations and learn real-world applications. I love the Thinking in Code course. You'll start building programs on day one, and you'll also develop your mind to think like a programmer, building a strong foundation in writing robust programs. To see just how far Brilliant could take you, you can try everything it has to offer free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer, or just click on the link in the description, or scan the QR code. Code. And you'll also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.